So my name is Ali Williamson, I'm an environmental engineer. My specialty is water quality management. So I've been invited today um, to speak to some senior students here at Penrith Selective High School. I'm really excited to hear what questions they have and start a dialogue. From the conversation today, I'm not really looking for anything specific. It's, I'm really just exploring like a new field I'm not very well versed in. So something that I could possibly pursue in the future if I was ever interested and to really find out from somebody who's really experienced in that field. I think wastewater management is something that's not often linked to engineering. So just having like a different sort of perspective on wastewater management. So I was wondering, how are you reconciling the pressure for economic growth in the wastewater management area? Well, I think it, it really comes back to, like in my mind, um, you know, economic growth is the whole economy, right? If we don't have drinking water, mm -hmm. there will be no economy. So I really see circular economy principles as it applies to, to water um, as a real massive key to maintaining economic growth. So this piece around, you know, recycled water, reusing water, replacing drinking water with recycled water for, for uses that are not, you know, say for industrial uses, using recycled water. And even that, even going further into the the purified recycled water space where we're actually taking our wastewater and treating it to a standard that we can drink. Would you say that there are enough resources going towards these sort of initiatives or would you say that there needs to be more funding in this sort of area? Yeah, I, I would say that we do need to invest in, especially in because these are new technologies, there's new um, initiatives, um, not a lot known. I think, I really think there should be a lot of investment the opportunities, especially in the, in the engineering space going forward, to really do that research, to, to come up with these ideas and concepts and um, technologies. As females, um, have you been exposed or do you have this kind of um, idea that there's a stigma of you know, engineering being a male-dominated industry? I think we've been very lucky. Yeah. We've been very privileged. Um, we've had a lot of opportunities as women in engineering to go and engage even outside of school. So inside of school we obviously have our lessons but then outside of school many universities are holding workshops and stuff that allow us to go as women and engage with other women in STEM. Excellent. I really got into engineering mainly just because I was doing well in STEM related subjects and I'm like what is the natural progression from here and I looked at engineering and it seemed like a really interesting subject. It's about like developing the world and it affects everyone. By learning engineering it can help me understand how everything around me works and I can also use that to make things and help the future by creating new products. So that's why I want to continue it as a career and into uni as well. What are the negative impacts that climate change has on drinking water quality? So we'll have things like drought. We have higher temperatures, so more bushfires. We're having more extreme rainfall events, so we're getting bigger storms. So all this sort of compounds into, you know, the perfect storm, like literally and figuratively. What happens is potentially you'll see a drought followed by a really massive wet weather event which will see everything that's kind of collected on the ground in that drinking water catchment just washed in. So it's like leaves and dirt and dead things. It's quite hard for the existing treatment systems to, to treat that quality of water because essentially they were built in the past where everything was fine and everything was pristine and clean and we didn't see these big spikes in poor raw water quality um, caused by these big events. So. What we've got now is not sufficient for what we're seeing now and probably not for the future if it's going to get worse. Do you think we're going to get to a point where everything manufactured can be recycled and reused so there's not too much waste? I think yes. And I think that's where the opportunities lie in people going into engineering now because we don't know, we don't know how to recycle everything. So there's still a lot more to learn, a lot of research to be done. I love engineering because it's about problem solving and creating a better future for everyone. Engineering to me is how we can manipulate the forces of nature and use the resources around us to enhance the human experience. And it also gives science a purpose, which I am very fond of. So what are some of the hurdles to achieving purified recycled water in the Sydney region? So I think the, the main one, people who, who associate water that's come from 
wastewater as being yucky. When in reality, like we've got the technology in place, it's proven, it's totally fine to drink. So it's that acceptance, that kind of community acceptance, which is one of the barriers. The other one is potentially the cost, right? There's quite a lot of uh, technology and like kit, essentially, that's needed to take water from being wastewater, water we've previously wasted, to a, a drinkable quality. I guess in a way I'm happy that, you know, the generation that's coming up now, I think we tend to be more accepting of those, you know, sorts of ideas. So I, I hope that in future we'll be able to have more acceptance mm. in the public. Where do you start in analysing the processes of uh, water purification? We like to say st staying in the problem. So you really have to really think through what we're trying to to solve it really comes back to like things are things are quite complex and you have to kind of break them up into to pieces to, to simplify and we always say as engineers we always jump straight to a solution right but you've got to got to resist I think it was very nice being able to talk to somebody who actually works in the field it's not every day that we get to have this diverse range of like opinions from different people who work in different sectors of engineering. I really found that chat valuable. It was really interesting to learn about how the ground clutter would clutter our um, waterways and like pollute the water which we use for drinking and also that our um, current systems were not built for the climate change. What I really liked about this conversation with Sally is how she explained one of the solutions for fixing the water quality issue that Sydney Water is currently facing which is using potable water um, in areas around Sydney. Uh, yeah, I think it was really nice to get someone who's in a, I guess, not so appreciating field, like somebody that you wouldn't really expect to see so often. And so it was nice to get her understanding, especially as like another woman getting something, I don't know, really uplifting about that as well, to see that somebody can really get somewhere in that field. Yeah. yeah. I didn't realise how much effect like climate events and things like bushfires and climate change had on the water quality and how difficult it is to filter that out using systems built in the past. I love talking to a real engineer about real projects that are happening in my local area. It's just a symbol to me of all the stuff that's happening in engineering, not just in water, but across the state, across the country, and even across the world. All the work that goes into engineering and how all these engineers are working together to create a better place for everyone. I think, you know, if we see kids like this um, going forward into engineering and having a passion for engineering and sustainability, I think the, the future actually does look really bright.